Hi, for this video, what I want to do is show you how to find uh, probabilities when dealing with the central limit theorem. Okay, so what we have here is the mean starting salary for a data analyst is $55,275. A random sample of size 40 is drawn from the population, and we're going to find the following probabilities. Assume that sigma is $7,000. All right, so what we have here is a lot of information going on. First off, we're finding a probability of a sample mean is what we're going to be finding. So this is when you would use this formula. So looking through, um, the mean of the sampling distribution of the sample means is going to be equal to the mean of the population. So if we read through the problem, this value right here is going to be our mean of our population. So this is mu. Okay, um, sigma sub x bar is equal to sigma, which is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So um, the 40 in the problem right here is going to be our sample size. So that's what we're going to plug in to find the standard error. This is called the standard error of the sampling distribution of the sample means. I know that that's a tongue twister, but we're basically looking for um, the average, how likely it is to get the average um, that's listed if this sampling distribution or if this was truly the population mean. Okay, um, so our z-score formula is what we're going to have to use in order to find the probability that is given to us. Okay, so what we're going to be looking for is the probability that the mean of the sample is less than 52,000. I also have one where it's in between and one where it's greater, so you can see all three scenarios and how to do this problem. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to find the z-score. In order to find the probabilities using a table, we need a z-score. So we're going to use this formula here. I'm going to go ahead and use this one. And it is very important when using this formula that you remember to put both the numerator and the denominator in parentheses. If you do not and you plug it into your calculator incorrectly, you're going to get the wrong answer. Okay, so x bar is going to come from our problem. So that's going to be our 52,000. And then we're going to subtract from it the population mean, which is the 55,000. 275 because the mean of the sampling distribution is the same as the mean of the population and again make sure you put this in parentheses divided by the square root or sorry divided by the population standard deviation 7000 divided by the square root of our sample size of 40. So I would simply put this entire thing into my calculator to get the answer. I wouldn't try to find this first and then divide by a decimal approximation because you're not going to get as exact of an answer. Okay, so with this, when I do plug this into my calculator, I end up with negative 2.958. And when using a Z table, you're going to round to two decimal places. So that would give us negative 2.96. So basically what's going to happen here is the probability that our sample mean is less than $52,000 is going to be equal to the probability that our z-score is less than negative 2.96. Okay, um, so with this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my table. I'm going to grab my table. And I have a table that gives us the information to the left. And I'm going to look for negative 2.9 here on this column. And I'm going to go all the way across that row. Sorry, it doesn't do what I want it to. Um, I'm going to go all the way across this row here. And it's just going to highlight the whole thing. It doesn't work like I want it to. And then we're going to go to the column, the 0.6 up here. So we're going to look for that intersection. And so this would be my answer, the 0 0.0015 would be our probability of that happening. Okay, um, so 0 0.0015 is our probability from our table. So that's what I would write down here. Okay, and in statistics, this is known as an unusual value. Anytime you have a probability that is less than um, Typically, the cutoff is 5%. Um, it's unusual. Anything less than 1% is extremely unusual. And so with this, it's 0.15% of this happening. So if you got a sample like this, it would be extremely unusual. So as far as interpreting this, just in case um, you need to interpret it, we would say that the probability, or we could say approximately 
0.15% of samples of size 40 will have a mean salary. So that means that if I take all 40 people that I selected and I averaged their salaries together, approximately 0.15% of the samples of size 40 will have a mean salary less than $52,000. Okay, so when you're interpreting, you always put the probability and it's most likely going to be as a percentage. Um, you do have to say that it's going to be a sample of size 40. Um, we'll have a mean salary that is less than $52,000. And I should have included data analysts in there. So approximately 1.5% of data analysts of samples of size 40 will have an average salary that is less than $52,000. Okay, it's much different if you're talking about a single person. A single person, the likelihood of that happening is much more likely than having an average of 40 people to be there. Okay, um, for this next one, this one is more intense because of the fact that you have to do um, multiple things in order to find the answer. Um, if you are using tables with this, you must first find the z-score for the 54,000. And then you have to find the z-score for the 57,000. And then you have to subtract the table value. So um, if you guys remember from using just normal models um, to find the area in between, you have to do the area of the larger z-score minus the area of the smaller z-score to get the area in between. So that's what we're going to do on this one. Again, we're still using this formula where we would do the x bar minus the mu divided by sigma over square root of n. So we're going to set it up exactly the same way. We're just going to use different values. Okay, so the first thing that we would do is find our z-score for 54,000. And I'm just putting a subscript of 54,000 just so I know that this z-score corresponds to that value. So we would take our x bar, which is the 54,000, minus our mean, which is 55,275 divided by 7,000 over the square root of 40. And again, make sure, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to make sure you put both the numerator and the denominator in parentheses or you will get the wrong answer. And if you plug this into your calculator, you get approximately negative 1.15. And I'm just rounding to two places because that's what you would do in, um, to look in the table. So it, it was negative 1.15197, but I just rounded it to two decimal places. And then we also have to find our z-score of our 57,000. So with this one, again, our x-bar is changing, the 57,000, that's our sample mean, minus 55,275 divided by Oh, goodness, ignore that. Divided by 7,000 over the square root of n. Sorry, square root of 40. That messed me up having that pop up. All right, so with this, when I plug this in, this gives me approximately... 1.56. It was really 1.558, but I just rounded it to two decimal places, so approximately 1.56. So what I'm going to do on this one is remember that the probability for this one, the probability that x bar is between, so we would say the probability that x bar is greater than 54,000 but less than 57,000 is going to be equal to the probability that our z-score is going to be between negative 1.5 and 1.56. Okay, so in order to do this, remember that anytime you're finding the area of the, or in between, you would do the area of the larger minus the area of the smaller. So in this case right here, our larger one would be the 1.56. So I'm going to find that one first. So I'm going to pull up my Adobe. I'm going to pull up my table. This one does give me the values to the left. So if you notice, the key at the top gives you the value to the left. 
And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for um, 1.5 on the left hand side. So I'm going to go down to 1.5 and then I'm going to go over until it's the 6 on the top and I get the 0 0.9406, so this value right here. And then I'm going to find the area of the smaller. So the area of the smaller, let me just undo that. I would go up to the negatives. Sorry, I hit the wrong one. Wrong scrolling. All right, so then I would go up to this one. And for this one, remember that we are looking for negative 1.15. So on this one, if I look, the 0.5 is at the top, negative 1.15 gives us 0 0.1251. So the 0 0.1251 is what I'm going to use here. And then if I simplify this, we end up with 0 0.8155. So if we had to interpret this, we would say approximately 81.55% of data analysts um, when I take a sample of size 40 of data analysts, um, approximately 81.55% of them will have a mean salary between 54,000 and 57,000. So that's very likely to occur. It's very likely to see um, a sample of size 40 having an average between 54,000 and 57,000. All right, so the last one that I wanna talk about is when we have more than. Again, the first thing that you're going to do is you're gonna find your z-score. Okay, and remember that we're going to do our X bar. So this would be our X bar is 57,000. That's our sample mean minus our population mean, which is 55,275. And again, we would put this in parentheses divided by 7,000 over the square root of 40. And when I plug this in, I get approximately 1.56 okay um, remember this is the same one that we just did it was the 1.56 from right here so I really didn't have to show the work again I just wanted to show you that it's the same thing and then what we would do is we would say the probability that our sample mean is greater than 57,000 is going to equal um, the probability that our z-score is greater than 1.56. And if you remember from this, there's two ways that you can do this. Um, traditionally, your textbook will teach you to do one minus um, the area to the left of the 1.56. Okay. Um, so with this, we just looked this one up, the 1.56. Um, was the 0 0.9406. So remember, we just looked this up. I can show you again, um, but we just looked that one up. So if we go back to here, remember the 1.56, 1.5, go over to 6, um, is the 0 0.9406. So we can do 1 minus 0 0.9406 equals 0 0.0594. The other thing that you could have done instead of doing this right here is you could have also looked at the opposite z-score. So if I looked at the opposite z-score, the opposite of positive 1.56 is negative 1.56. So if I go up here to find the negative 1.5 and I go over to the 6, notice that it gives me the same thing, the 0 0.0594. Um, so either way, you get the same answer. It's just a matter of preference. To me, I look at the opposite z-score all the time just because of the fact that I know that it's going to give me the same thing. Um, but if you need to show work, this is how you would show work. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.